Hi, everyone. I'm Kimberly Sustad, and I'm from the nine kittens of Christmas this year. And you are listening to the Hallmark Happenings podcast. <laughs> well, I am so excited to talk about this like kind of unexpected sequel to the nine lives of Christmas. I think it was something we all wanted forever, but never thought would actually happen. So mm-hmm. I want to know for you, how does it feel to like revisit this world of Christmas and kittens? <laughs> Oh, it was, it was lovely. Uh, Brandon and I picked up exactly where we had left off in terms of working together. And the story uh, got to a place that we were really happy with. It was nice because it isn't your typical sequel where a lot of time has passed. And so nine lives of Christmas and nine kittens of Christmas can actually quite stand on their own. If you had never even seen nine lives, I don't think that's going to be the case for many people watching nine kittens. Um, I think we did it because of the people asking for it, the fans, but it is a, a whole new story and a, and a, a whole new love story. And it, it will be as, as great. I hope with a few callbacks, you know, of course, to the first one that, that people will love and be able to, um, fall along, follow along in a, in a new way. Exactly. That's exciting. So even if you haven't seen the first one, like you said, I, I figure most people have, cause gosh, what a great one it was. It's like one of the classic Christmas movies for Hallmark channel. It's just, it's so different than the others. I mean, just like there were certain things in the script that were kind of funny that you don't hear like in a lot of other Hallmark movies. So yeah. I hope that thing quality is kept for the sequel. Some of these funny lines that are kind of like, whoa, unexpected. Yeah. And a lot of that just comes from Mary Lee, right? That, that, that character of she sort of talks before she thinks a lot of the time <laughs> and trips on her words and, uh, and then tries to recover. And that's, you know, the fun of, of her and where that is absolutely still there in this movie. So. And that's, what's funny when someone does it, like you're saying, you don't think about it and it's blurted out and you're like, what in the world did I just say? And that's why people love Marilee because she says the funniest things. Yeah. And she's like, and then she is trying to like rework it in a Mm -hmm. minute, you know, in in the worst situation possible. And, you know, yeah, that's life. That's, that's what makes life fun. So I have to know, like for you, you're a busy actress and a mom and you have a lot going on, but like when you got this call, was it out of the blue that they wanted to actually go forward with the sequel? Like there were solid plans going forward. What was going through your mind? Well, that we've actually been talking about it for two years and you know, Hallmark's been, we thought about it a while ago actually. And then we just thought, do we really want to touch the first one or should we just let it be the gem that it is? And we, we sort of settled with that for many years and then figured, yeah, I thought myself that would, you know, we wouldn't do it. Um, and then they came up with a concept that was exciting that I don't want to totally give away, but we, you know, these two, seven years has passed um, and these two are not together and like what happens and why that happened will all, you know, be revealed in the movie, but they are living very vastly different lives when we enter this movie. So we still get this, like, there's an old and a new to, to the movie. And that was exciting to me to be able to like gra- like grapple with a new story and some regret and some you know, yeah, regret and things that you might change and possibly having the opportunity to change those things. And so the story has some really nice sentimentality to it, but also the fun and the humor of of the first one. So that kind of came along and then we were like, all right, this, let's do this. Um, And we, you know, with COVID and a bunch of other scripts that uh, happened to sort of take precedence 
we weren't able to to get to it until this year. So here it is, but it has been a kind of couple of years in the making. <laughs> oh, wow. So I bet you're excited to finally get to like, see the, the final product if you haven't already. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, I saw the breakdown for this back in like end of August and I was like, oh my gosh, I know what this is a sequel to. So I was so excited. It had a little snippet, like, and you can see a couple of places online, a snippet of like what the plot summary is. Can you kind of share it with everyone to get us like a little insight into what we can expect in the sequel? What's been online? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I think it's like y'all aren't together anymore, but these kittens kind of reunite you as you're trying to get them adopted or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we aren't together and we haven't been together for quite some time. And I, uh, Marilee comes home for the holidays under sort of some, you know, new circumstances that bring her home. And, uh, the adventure that begins of, her kind of being in her old stomping grounds again and how, you know, she bumps into uh, Zachary instead of, you know, in the first movie we had, he had a cat literally on his doorstep (laughs) that kind of made its way into his home. This time he has nine kittens Um, and it's sort of a, happens uh, again to him and we are tasked with um, what to do with these kittens and it they they do tend to they bring us together to try and figure out how to find these kittens homes and to take care of them and and who is the best people for them and all kinds of things happen <laughs> uh, amidst that and new people come into the plot and, um, it's sort of, that's, does that, it <laughs> does, so it does. It tells, it tells it, us a little bit. About getting absolutely. Away. I think they're like in every frame of the movie. So if Brand and I totally fail at this sequel, the kittens are really cute <laughs> <laughs> and they make up for seriously, whatever we might lack. They're, they're, it was mayhem. There are nine of them all the time running amok everywhere. And acting with kittens is, you know, they're just, they talk a lot and they jump everywhere. And they're like, you know, they climb up your coat and your sweater and you're trying to, um, <laughs> you know, be in a scene, but the, the kittens do take over quite a lot. I have to know, since this is all about the cats, will Ambrose and Queenie make a reappearance in the sequel? Yes. Oh, yay. Yeah. There, there, there is a new twist to things that I can't share just yet, but we have our cats. Okay. I have a question. I can't remember. I know Queenie was obviously probably a girl. Was Ambrose a boy? Yeah. Oh, I wonder what could this be? Could they have had kittens? <laughs> well, maybe not because they showed up at the door, but you never know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll just have to see. Uh, now we have to talk about you reuniting with brown eyes again, Brandon. What was it like, like when you both found out this was actually going to go forward first day on set where you like, I can't believe we're here again. What was that? Just kind of reuniting with him. Yeah. And like uh, my sister's back and her husband and the fire chief, Sam, and, you know, like all, all of the cast were there and really excited to be reunited and and do it again. It's been so much time and so much life has happened for us personally. And so it was, yeah, it was really nice. And I think we felt really happy and I'm proud of what we were doing and just proud of the first one. You know, we're like none of us had all kind of gotten together since that, since filming the first one. Um, so yeah, it was really, it was nice. And, and Brian and I, you know, had the same chemistry and <laughs> we, I, I think it's just how the characters are written as well. You know, they're very, they're very opposite and um, 
it's fun to watch these two interact again. I hope, I hope, I mean. <laughs> oh yes, absolutely. We're all excited for it. Um, I'm wondering, is there like something, I know because you can't give too many details away, but is there something like in this sequel that you're so excited for fans to see, like fans of this like original movie who are just like diehard fans? Cause I know Jax from the bubbly sesh, this is their favorite movie and this got her like started. So what are like you most excited for these super fans to see? Um, goodness sakes, I am excited for them to really pinpoint the callbacks to the first, the diehard fans that know the inside jokes or the things that we kind of pull from the first movie into this one. Um, Cause you can't do the same thing twice, right? Like the same thing, but we did do a nice job of going, remember like that thing guys and like playing it out in a different way. And the, those certain scenes that I think stick out in people's minds, we, there's a, you know, it was important to me to bring back Marilee's love for ice cream. <laughs> And like, you know, the shopping crazy, a lot of people talk to me about how, you know, reaching in and, but it's a, it's a totally new scene in a different way, but ice cream is still involved in the grocery store scene and um, the puffy coat, we brought back the puffy coat. Like, so there's like some things in there that I think will be nice for, for people to have yeah I guess especially like if you watch the first one right before the sequel and kind of like feel like get all these little reminders of these fun little moments that can't wait to see kind of brought up again in the sequel yeah yeah and to there there's a new like there was a lot of mountain lions right this whole idea of the mountain lions and we take that in an in a new direction but still with you know cat obsessed <laughs> people like we still use the metaphors in a new in a new way that were present in the first one yes I mean how could you forget the last scene of the first one like with that last like mountain line reference it was just so great yeah, oh yeah. gosh love this movie yeah, and I'm excited for people to see how this one ends yes can't wait yeah. oh I wish you could just tell me but then where's the fun in that we'll just wait I know I know I know well, I was wondering, I forgot to look this up before um, I talked to you, but is the writer the same or the, is the director the same at all? No, they, oh, they're interesting. new writers and new uh, director, which, which, which was, was great to have a new eye, like, cause we were making a whole nother movie um, and for it to take its own shape. So I think as a standalone, it's a great film, but as a sequel, that makes it even better because we're not just, there's real conflict and there's real things that have pushed us apart and there's real uh, stuff that has to get solved, you know? And so, um, yeah. So it's like I a think. fresh take that still captures the essence of the first movie. And we're still the same people, right? Yeah. Like so the characters are still there, but it's just like new scenarios and them having to overcome mm -hmm. new things. Absolutely. Well, that's fun. Well, I can't wait to see this. Oh my gosh. I think this is probably the one most people are like really excited about just because, I mean, when you get a sequel, that's like seven years after the, the first one, that's a long time. So, I mean, I'm, I yeah. bet everyone's so excited for this. I'm going to put a <laughs> poll out and say who else is like so excited for this. I'm sure it'll be hundred percent. Everyone's excited. Um, but I have a question like, I mean, it's probably filmed in what, two or three weeks. Is there maybe a scene or like a memory from filming that kind of like stands out in your mind? You're like, oh, that was special. <laughs> yeah, there was a, on the very last, on Brandon's very last day of filming, the scene kind of took it where, and it's towards the end of the movie. It sort of was like, oh, like this is, the end of the road a little bit for, and I'm not saying that necessarily happens in the movie, but like for, for Zach and Marilee and the scene turned out so beautifully 
in just going, we, you know, these, these two characters together fit so well. Um, and there was some like ad living in there that turned out from the heart and was, I'm, I'm, was really impressed with how that progressed toward, toward the end of the film. So uh, without saying, you know, what it is, I think the way that we thrust toward the ending of this film, I think people will be really satisfied. <laughs> good, good. Well, it sounds like it was a little emotional maybe. Yeah. And going, you know, I hope we did it justice, you know, I think for sure the ending will and um, everybody deserves that after all this time. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So that's what I'm most excited for. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I mean, gosh, it's been nearly a decade and here we are. And then Thanksgiving day, everyone's going to have their turkey and their stuffing. And they're going to sit down and watch this movie. <laughs> yeah. Are um, you going to, oh, are you kidding? I'm going to record yeah. it. I, cause I always record the ones I'm most excited about saying, so go rewatch it and like fast forward through the commercials. Cause I feel like it's yeah. a better viewing experience. So you can just like get a full like hour and a half uninterrupted. <laughs> yeah. Now I've, I mean, you might just say cat person, but are you a cat person? Or are you a dog person personally? You know, when I did the first movie, I was a dog person. And after spending all this time with these kittens and these two cats, I'm like, every, here's a, here's a, actually, I should have mentioned this. This is a cool fun fact about this movie too, is all of the crew members and cameramen and like everybody that was involved in making the film adopted these kittens in the end. So they, everyone has like a nine lives of, or like a nine kittens of Christmas cat. And it was so sweet because we fell in love with them. We were working with them every day. And they, I would like, I knew which one felt comfortable and like which, you know, one of them loved to like be, in my jacket really tight. So I'd zip them inside my jacket. And then he'd just be like, mur, mur, you know, like you'd be like so calm and like sometimes fall asleep in the scene. He was like so warm in my puffy coat. And like another one just like loved to just be kind of like bounced a little. Like you got to know these little babies and like what they loved. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I, if I wasn't allergic to cats, <laughs> which is also, <laughs> a crazy fact of doing so many cat movies, but I would totally have taken one of these kittens home. And I, yeah, they, they steal your heart so quick. They were so sweet. Well, I tell you what, everyone who adopted one of those cats has to have like a, a group picture, like a reunion picture, like a year. From yeah. The yeah. Film. I kind of like circle back and be like, how's our baby, you know, <laughs> group chat. <laughs> yeah. That's so cute. Oh, how fun. Well, it kind of everyone's day, connected. Kind of, all got to take them home. So like the, they were, you know, everyone was, we had these like grown men who were like cameramen and talking about, oh, I got the, you know, I got the creed and I got the, you know, like, I think we're ready for the drive, you know, they're like so concerned. I got them a blanket and they picked out their names and it was like the sweetest thing to just watch and then like every time we yelled cut whoever's cat was like in that scene mom or dad would like come in and like take their kitten and be like oh hi baby you know and like it was so sweet they they were just hovering around their new babies and it was the it was the best there are probably not many movies where that occurs. I mean, no, a unique no. situation. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. Wow. Well, they all need like matching collars or something. I mean, I, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else? I have all these questions, but we pretty much covered them. Is there anything else that I should be asking you about this or things that you want to like tell fans anything that I just can't think of right now? <laughs> no, I think in all vulnerability, I when you do something again, you just have this fear that it will be what's in everybody's hearts. <laughs> and, uh, I, I think there is a, a beauty to how after seven years we mature as, as people, and there is a natural maturity to both Marilee and Zachary, 
that I think adds a new sentiment to this, uh, to this film. And I, cause we are dealing with something that was familiar at one point as, as characters. And it's more in the, the longing of that history than it is a, a brand new thing that is like, I don't know what to do here. You know, like we do, there is a sense of knowing, but using that distance and that time that so much is unsaid of, of it all. And that I think is the heart of, and, and contemplating decisions that you've made in life and were they the right ones or were they the, you know, what the choices we make and where they lead us. Um, so I think it has some like a little bit of a more serious tone <laughs> at some points, but I think it adds a little extra depth. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoy. Oh, I'm sure. Like you said, the characters have matured. So it kind of makes sense to maybe have some more, maybe mature, like serious, um, storylines going through it. Yeah. But still like a lot of fun, a lot <laughs> of Mer- Merrily is still very much Merrily. <laughs> and yeah. So anyway do you think there is a chance or to have like a third one or is this just like the perfect kind of like way to finish out this great relationship let's talk about that after you see the second (laughs) okay (laughs) everyone would love a third one I mean they'd probably love it to just go on and on it could be like a tv series (laughs) I know I was saying we should just take these two characters and put them in like a crime solving situation (laughs) with kittens to help there was a show, gosh, it's really old, but it was called um, That Darn Cat. And it was like, they were mystery solving with a cat. Did you ever see that? No, I it's need like, to look it up though. That's good. They like remade it. I don't know. It's from like the eighties or nineties. I don't know. You should look up. It's a great cat okay, I movie will. I will. It's, it's for a good cat. And there's another one I used to watch back when there was a blockbuster and they had like this kids program. You get a free movie in the summer. It was like the skateboarding cat. And then the cat from outer space. I had a thing for cats and I was little, all these funny situations, the cat. Yeah. So you can go watch those. I'm sure the, the quality there might be an idea in there for Zach and Mary Lee. I know yeah. we're, we're, we're thinking, we're thinking. Got to get those ideas rolling. Now I have a question. I can't remember. I know she was, Mary Lee was in like a veterinary in school did she graduate in that one or is, I'm sure she's now a full veterinarian is can you is that the case she is a veterinarian now okay yeah good she, she got through that she did graduate and is a vet so comes in handy with these nine kittens oh I'm sure it does have that <laughs> skill set <laughs> which is kind of why they end up you know why she ends up helping in the first place okay so it all makes sense well can't yeah. wait for that now <laughs> Before we finish up, I want to know, do you have any Christmas traditions that you were really excited to um, celebrate and, and do this year? You know, I get asked that question a lot because I do a lot of Christmas movies. And by the time Christmas rolls around for me, after having done all of the little things in movies, <laughs> I sit and have red wine and, you know, uh, watch my kids play with their new toys or we don't, yeah, it's like, I, I feel like I've, I cannot top everything that I do in a Hallmark movie every year. So by the time I'm like, I'm not actually like on a sleigh with horses in the snow or I, you know, I'm just like everybody else sitting there going, oh, okay, let's get the turkey in the oven. I mean, I love to cook. So I, I always spend a lot of time on the turkey, but um, we always have a game night uh, Christmas Eve with our family. And um, that always happens. And it's weird. I don't know why we started to do this, but we ordered Chinese food Christmas Eve, (laughs) always, every year, wherever we are with whoever is joining us. And it just has always been this thing since I was a kid. And I, yeah. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, I mean, great. Eight, nine until the wee hours of the morning. Now that sounds like a fun Christmas uh, movie. I mean, like I would love to see that <laughs> in a Hallmark movie because it's like, yeah, we should add it in. We should add it in. That's so cool. Well, that's fun. I love that. Just a little spin. I know like on um, Thanksgiving, a lot of people like from Latin America, they will have tamales because, you know, it's a little different. So I'm like, there's a different spin on that. Yeah. Yeah. Or like 
some, I know people make like tortellinis or, Mm -hmm. you know, depending on what their, I don't know, I got to plug you in here. Um, (laughs) Depending on what their, I don't know, you get this like, hey, be prepared, Kimberly, for your Zoom meeting, right? (laughs) Well, thank you for Um, fitting me in last minute. I mean, I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm about to start another film. So I thought, you know, it would be much better to do now. Oh, well, then this is the perfect follow-up question. Can you tell us about other projects you have going on? <laughs> uh, yeah, on Tuesday, I, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm starting a uh, Three Sisters, it's called. And it's um, more of a, a, a family drama instead of a romance. So it centers around these three sisters and... Yeah, Hallmark is kind of launching some new scripts in that way that aren't just so, uh, you know, romance centered around whatever the season is. Um, so I'm excited. We'll, we're going to start that on, on Tuesday and it takes place in Alaska, but we're going to film it, you know, in, in Whistler and Squamish and in, in the mountains in, in BC. So you know, I actually think I remember hearing about this a few months ago. Um, who are, who are your co-stars? I know there are two other big names in there. I saw this press release a while back. Um, gosh, I don't know if I can. I'm like, I don't, is, I is it Allison it's... Sweeney and Lacey Chabert? It, for some reason, those names pop in my head. No, no. But wouldn't that be cool? That would be cool. I'm like, I feel, I know I saw something about this. Cause I feel like the title sounds cool, but if you can't share, I totally understand. I know. I'm like, go to quickly ask the <laughs> producer, but no, uh, what that I'm sure they'll make a, a whole announcement coming up, coming up soon. Oh, that's exciting. It was like, I wanted to make those movies. And so I f- feel really fortunate to have gotten into a a genre and a family that allows me to make those (laughs) movies. Um, Granted, they may not be on the scope of like bounty hunter or whatever, but I I find, you know, the, the heart of what Hallmark does and and what they're about to, I I feel great, grateful to be nestled in their family and to have the opportunity to over and over and over again, play, you know, a romantic lead. So that's, those movies are sort of the inspiration of wanting to, to, to do it. And, um, I went for it and here I am. (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah. And they're so great. And I feel like nine lives of Christmas is kind of just like unique in itself. Just like some of those were, I mean, Meg Ryan, gosh, she was the queen of the nineties. I know. I love her. Like you got mail and uh, like just the best. Oh, she really was. Well, I hope you get to do like a big budget one like that sometime because, oh, they're so, yeah. they don't make them that much anymore. I don't feel like, I feel like the last, yeah, we've got to bring them back. We've got to bring them back. And that, I think that's, what's made Hallmark so popular in aspect, like, and overseas too. Like these, these movies are all the rage because we don't get that I think people are like me. Like we love those movies. We love sitting down and watching people fall in love. It just never gets old. So um, yeah, they hit a market that's really lacking and really smart because people like you and I, I mean, we'll, we'll revisit you've got mail till till we're old, you know? (laughs) Yes. I mean, no offense to any Marvel fans out there, but I'm like another superhero movie. Seriously, give us the rom-coms. I mean, Sandra Bullock, where are you? (laughs) I know. I know. Yeah. Like the proposal and like two weeks notice. Love her so much. Exactly. Yeah. So I do agree with you. Hallmark does fill that void of the much needed rom-com because you can never have too many of those. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm, I'm grateful they let me, you know, push the envelope in terms of like in the hallmark world of how funny can our our leads be or what can they say and i'm oh, always yes. pushing that envelope 
I and love so- that. That's what makes some of the, some of the, like the great rom-coms kind of funny because they did push the envelope a few ways than I do. I, again, nine lines of Christmas, there are a few things in there that push the envelope and make it like, oh, that's so funny. Cause it's a little unexpected. And so you get yeah. to be a part of those and you're great at it. You're so funny. Well, uh, to finish up, we've got to do a quick rapid fire. What is the okay. last show you binge watched? The last show succession. Oh, that's a popular uh, answer among Hallmark actors for some reason. Everyone really? Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm binge watching it now. Actually, the the is the third season. Yeah. Okay, I haven't watched it, but I know it is just super popular. Well, that- for the morning show and impeachment, mm-hmm. I'm in, like I have like three that I've been when I can get getting back to. Oh Those yeah, I all- heard the morning show is great. Yeah. I mean, gosh, talent. <laughs> and then uh, let's see, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Because a perfect Marilyn you know, ice cream. Hold on. You know what an even funnier answer is that would be better than those three, like really mainstream Outlander. Outlander. Love Outlander. <laughs> oh, it looks so good. I like the period film and all like the attire and everything. So is that oh, good? Yeah. And it's really romantic and steamy. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I looked up, I don't, I, his name's like Sam Kaplan or something. I looked him up the other day. I'm like, man, he is an attractive guy. <laughs> you, okay. You got to watch Outlander. Okay. It's the next on my thank list. You, thank me. Yeah, oh, I will. I'm, I'm already thanking you. Thanks, Kimberly. Um, and, uh, oh yeah. Favorite ice cream flavor. Do you have one? Vanilla. I know. Sorry. Super boring. Well, but vanilla or vanilla like, bean? I do love a good dipped cone, mm. you know, when they like, and then it like hardens. Mm-hmm. This is my favorite. Oh, those are so good. Like they're, they're classic. You can never go wrong with that. And it's so fun to look at them, like dip it. And it's all cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a science experiment, how it hardened. Um, but, uh, and then finally, is there a place that you'd like to visit, but you've not had the opportunity to travel to? That I'd like to go to? Mm-hmm. Greece. Mm, Greece. Wow. That's yeah. a good choice. Yeah. I have never been in uh, the, it looks incredible like all the white cliffs mm. and all the buildings with the blue and the white. I, yeah. Oh, okay. So there's this guy, his name's Rick Steves. He does like travel videos. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he has like 25 minute videos and he has several ones on Greece and there's this beautiful, there, like the history. You've got to watch those to like write down some things to go see. <laughs> yeah. And the food and the kebabs mm. and the, yeah. Oh, the food alone, like authentic Greek food. I mean, doesn't get better than authentic Greek food. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, I hope you get to go soon. Um, thank you so much for chatting with me. I really appreciate it. So excited for the movie and tell everyone where can they watch it and what time, not where they all know it's Hallmark channel, but so Thanksgiving evening on Hallmark channel. And you'll just have to look where, depending on where you live, uh, but it'll be broadcast throughout the entire U S at the same time. Um, East coast might actually have, I, you know, I think it's seven or eight <laughs> in the so evening. Know. It's just sometime in the evening, but check your TV guides. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you'll be done dinner and you'll be done talking to your families. Trust me. And <laughs> all sit down and watch the nine kittens of Christmas together and start getting excited for Christmas. Yes. What a perfect way to spend Thanksgiving. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for reaching out. Of course. Have a great day. Okay. You too. Bye. Bye.